Hey, how is it going? So I'm just sitting here, enjoying the beautiful sunshine, uh, just taking a moment, just looking over some stuff, you know, going over some of the sick week uh, coverage here and, you know, some of the things going on in the automotive universe. Of course, I've come across some posts and first of all, once again, this is not a shit talking video. This is just a conversation as all. And I ain't talking bad about no one. But with that out of the way, I saw a post from Jesse at EMS. I've been kind of following him. He's been part of Sick Week 2. Obviously, being an EcoBoost um, enthusiast to some extent, I follow him a little bit. I'm curious to know exactly what his car is capable of. As per usual in his experience with his car, he had problems. He had problems the whole time and it's been rough. So it kind of goes back to my original saying is these built EcoBoost cars are not competitive because they're just too unreliable. But it doesn't stop the guy from trying, so I give him that. I give him that all day long. Then, you know, he posted something about a, uh, a company that his company works with um, to manufacture special billet intake manifolds for the uh, two, three EcoBoost. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I wonder what the price on this is because, you know, they have like that Evo Boost intake manifold you can buy that uses a uh, Mitsubishi Evo intake manifold with basically an ad adapter flange to make it work on a, a 2.3, like that's already pushing almost $1,000 for just that setup alone. So I'm like, man, is this like $1,000 or is this less than or about the same, but with better fitment? I go and click on the thing and I look at the price and I'm like, I almost fell out of the chair. It was almost $1,600. And I'm pretty sure this is the same manifold that's on uh, Jesse's eight second EcoBoost, $1,600. And that is like the base price. Of course, there's like options for things and it can get up to two thousand dollars for this billet manifold for the EcoBoost. I, my question is, who is really paying two thousand dollars for a billet manifold on these cars? Who's doing it? I want to know. Like why? Like I'm glad people are making parts for these cars, but just like my complaint has been the whole time, now all these these companies are making race parts for an engine that is not a competitive race platform. Now we have another full-fledged race part that is ridiculously expensive, and it just begs the question, why? Is this, is this manifold really worth it, and who is really buying it? Um, I can't see myself spending that money for it. Now, I understand perhaps there's a benefit to a billet manifold if you are running crap tons of boosts, like 45 plus PSI, I'd imagine might be a bit of a liability on the stock plastic manifold. But there are other options. There really is. And I just can't imagine. I just don't understand why no one just, you know how easy it is to go and make a, an adapter flange for a manifold? It literally all has to be a plate. If the ports are, are pretty much the same shape and size, you just have to make a plate with a different bolt pattern and you can use any manifold out there on the market that is close to the same spacing on the intake ports in size and shape. And I know there's gotta be tons of them. So why why aren't people going that route? You know, I just, it just boggles my mind that the aftermarket for this platform, for this engine is just like balls to the wall race parts. There's still the, the parts out there to kind of help with this like the you know, middle ground, pretty decent horsepower streetcar build, but it's like now all these shops are going for full race car stuff. Why, man? And I, this is this is where I get upset because I see it all the time. I see it in the forums, I see it on YouTube, I see it just people talking in person that I've talked to. Everyone talks, they just repeat, they regurgitate the same information that they get without doing any research of their own and everyone always spews the same information without any regards to, hey, maybe there's a possibility that other options exist. So example to that, when building a four or 500 horsepower EcoBoost, what turbo does everyone mention? 
NX2, an NX2 Turbo, NX2 this, NX2 that, oh, gotta have an NX2. That three letter name is embedded in everyone's mind, NX2. How much is an NX2 Turbo? Well, you can get an NX Turbo made by various different companies, but hey, let's go with probably one of the most popular and renowned turbocharger manufacturers in the world, Precision Turbo. They have a NX2 Turbo bolt on everything, you know, for this car for $2,000. Now you're thinking to yourself, hey, well, that ain't too bad. I'll spend $2,000 for a turbo upgrade until you realize that you don't have to spend that money for that kind of power level. Because guess what? Ford has had the turbo now for a few years with this car. When this far car first came out, the turbo that has come on this car, I shoot, is better than the NX2. I'm gonna say it. Someone's gotta say it. And if you don't believe my word, here's the specs. An NX2 is a 5252 size turbo, okay? For performance, a uh, high performance turbo is a 50, but, oh, oh no. Just because it's two millimeters smaller on the turbine shaft, it makes up for it in volumes on the compressor side, which is really important. A 5063, 11 millimeters larger compressor wheel than an NX2. And an NX2 has a uh, ratio of 0.70, and the uh, Ford Performance Turbo is 0.71. It's going to move more air than an NX2, and an NX2 can support 550 or so wheel horsepower. So I would probably say that a Ford Performance Turbo can push upwards to 600. Guess what? The Ford Performance Turbo is only $1,300. You can get them less here and there. I don't know if they make up the cost difference with shipping and whatnot, but straight from Ford Performance themselves, it's like 13 something, 1400 bucks or so. So yeah, you're saving, you know, minimum of three, 400 bucks compared to the next manufacturer making a turbo for this car and you have a better turbo. But no one talks about that. No one says, oh yeah, you should go get a Ford Performance Turbo. You know why? Because almost none of these aftermarket shops carry them. Most of the shops get the same brands, the same manufacturers, because they're easier to get. Ford Performance is probably not easy to get with as a retailer, I would imagine. And maybe there's something more to it than that, but everyone always sells NX2. No one talks about the Ford Performance Turbo. Same thing with the Ford Performance cams. Why would the average guy spend eight, $900 on Kelford cams or some of the other options for these you know, small batch ground cams for the EcoBoost when the specs are almost the same as a $200 set of Ford Performance cams. Please tell me why. Tell me why no one, any of these EcoBoost guys are like, if you're on a budget, this is what you need because they're not They're I get it. They're in the business. They got to stay, keep their doors open, but they, they're just giving such bad information to the average guy who doesn't know better. And the average guy trying to make power out of these cars are going to spend thousands and the equivalent to build a thousand horsepower car just to make half that on four cylinders because none of the information out there is good. They all want you buying these really high end like race spec parts that is absolutely useless on this platform. Ford, honestly, I give Ford a lot of crap, but Ford's performance divisions, their engineers, they kind of know a thing or two, and I got to give them credit where credit is due. And the fact that they can manufacture these parts and keep the cost low, that is off to them. And I just get so sick and tired of seeing this. I like, once again, nothing against Jesse. I get he's got a business, but here he is trying to promote all these expensive ass parts. I just wanna know who really is trying to buy, who has bought, who is bought. Where is the benefit, truthfully? But his car, who's, who, who's dumped, I mean, more money than the average person would building a Mustang like that to go eights, just eights, bottom eights, but eights nonetheless. And it can never be competitive because the car's always having issues. I mean, it's just, Oh, it's wild to me to think they got to find a better way. And it sucks because I just wish more companies focused on developing the parts that are affordable to get like the five, 600 horsepower out of this platform easier and cheaper, because I think that's where this 
platform shines. It just sucks because it lives in the shadow of the Coyote, which is so damn good in compared. I mean, just the fact that at Sick Week, one of the fastest cars was a sleeved factory block stock head Coyote with crap tons of boost. It just goes to show you that there, it's, it's really hard to want to spend any kind of money on this platform. Not not saying four cylinders are a waste of money. There is a crap ton of fast four cylinders out there. In fact, uh, I saw a video the other day of a, uh, what do you call it? A uh, The Mazda 3 variant of the 2.3. It was like 1300 horsepower. Like stock block, you know, rods, pistons, stock head, port it. It's like, what? <laughs> you couldn't do that. You can't do that <laughs> with this. There ain't no way. 1300 plus wheel horsepower? Uh uh. That ain't happening. And I bet you what? I bet that person who built that engine probably paid a lot less. Well, maybe not a lot less, but less than trying to make one of these uh, Ford versions make that much power. I'll tell you that. It was just on my mind, and I just want to talk about it. I want to see, you know, what you all think about this like am i wrong for thinking this like am i out of line for thinking the aftermarket for this car is out of line you know just let me know put your thoughts in the in the comment section on all of this but i think it's going to finally wrap it up here for the video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up share with everyone you know if you want to see more content like this and you haven't already go ahead subscribe to the channel and keep a lookout for the next cars created video